How's it going everyone and welcome to another episode of Toy Photography Breakdown. In this one we're going to be doing a little bit of high suspension with figures and of course some fireworks. So a couple weeks ago I started a new toy photography video series called Toy Photography Breakdown and I'll break down a toy photo from the start at the creative idea all the way down to the editing and the final product. And so this one is going to be kind of a spin on a very iconic awesome action scene. You underestimate my power! So we all know and love the iconic and awesome battle of heroes from Revenge of the Sith, Anakin vs. Obi-Wan, and we all kind of know how that one ends. <laughs> But uh, this is a little bit of a what if kind of spin scenario where Anakin has the upper hand this time. So what I'm going to do to get this awesome lava Mustafar scene is I'm going to go to a local volcano that's erupting right now and no, I'm just kidding. I wish I could do that. I don't have anywhere near me in upstate New York. So what we're going to do is just use some fireworks and some rocks to hopefully make it look like splashing lava and stuff like that. So my vision for this photo is kind of just to have Anakin propped up on this tall rock in the middle of Mustafar, and he's lifting and choking Obi-Wan with the force. And he's totally suspended, and you can't see any ground below Obi-Wan, which I think will just add a really cool kind of stakes and stuff to the shot. Plus, it'll be fun with practical effects, and also, everyone loves a good what-if scenario. Like, oh, what if this happened? You know, like, that's so much fun. So, logistically, for the photo, I'm gonna need an Anakin, an Obi-Wan figure, some sticks and stuff to prop everybody up, some nice rocky area that I've got here in my backyard, and also, of course, fireworks. I'm gonna break all that down, and also I'm gonna break down how I edit the fireworks and edit all of the lighting within the fireworks shots and all that stuff. So, it's gonna be a great episode. So, and also, as I put out these toy photography breakdown videos, please comment and let me know what types of other shots you'd like me to break down, such as this one, so I can go in great detail and make it as helpful as possible. So, of course, with any toy photo, we gotta look at some toys. So, let's take a look at what figures I'm gonna use for this shot. Here we go. These are the figures I've got right here. Right here is the SH Figuarts Anakin uh, from Revenge of the Sith. This figure actually came out years ago, and they did a re-release of him about a year ago, and that's when I was able to get him, so I'm very happy to have this figure. In my opinion, it's the best 112 scale Anakin that's out there. I definitely think somebody should make some new ones. We need a new Anakin. Who knows, maybe with the new Ahsoka, we'll see some Mafex or SH Figuarts. I don't know. I don't have the Figuarts Obi-Wan, or any Figuarts Obi-Wan, but I've got these two Black Series one. This is the Archive Obi-Wan from Revenge of the Sith, Black Series, uh, and he's okay. Um, I don't love him, but I do also have this really cool Clone Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi as well. And so I'm thinking I can switch the faces on these two because the face on the Archive one is not so great, but the face on this Clone Wars one with the clone armor is just in incredible. Like, it's so good. Like, why are they so off from each other? I don't know. So I'm going to switch them over and see uh, how that looks. Okay, let's pop the heads off. They should. Nice. Okay, that's great. And this one, too. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay. Well, it's not a perfect fit. The skin tone is a little bit different for sure, but I don't think that'll be a problem. If I have to edit it out in Photoshop, that's fine, but it is a little wobbly, it doesn't fit on. For the photo, it should work fine, and that looks so much better than the other one. It's incredible, the, the difference between these two head sculpts. Like, why didn't they just, when they did the archive, did they use this sculpt? Who knows, what are they doing? So, to avoid the wobbliness, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this blue sticky tack that I use so often with toy photography. I'm gonna put a little bit on there like that, and there we go. Perfect. <laughs> okay, what do you say we take these figs out and take some shots? Okay, I'm outside. Hopefully my audio doesn't get all bad here because it's a little bit windy, but I've got myself set up here, and I'm actually kind of proud of how this looks because it's kind of weird and suspended all over the place. So here we go. I've got my camera set up on my kind of slightly longer tripod, which uh, I do like a lot, and I do have it linked in the description along with everything else that I'm using today. And I've got this going on right here. So Anakin is pissed off. He's using the, the force to choke Obi-Wan over the lava, and there's... Oh, it's great. 
on Mustafar in my rocky little area here. So I've got Obi-Wan on this long wooden dowel here. And you can get these things thinner, thicker at Walmart for really cheap or like a craft store for like a dollar more. And they're really great for all kinds of stuff. I use them all the time. Anakin actually has some sticky tack on his back, which is helping him balance. And so Obi-Wan is over here just getting choked out. And I do have his lightsaber. So I'm gonna take a couple of separate photos like this with his lightsaber kind of floating there, like dropping it or something, just to add a little bit of extra. That's really my, my whole setup. So I've got these guys right here. These are crackling ball fireworks. I use these all the time. I've got several videos on how to use them and how to edit and all that stuff, but it, I'm gonna go through that in detail in this video. But if you want any more, even greater detail, probably head to those videos. I'll have them linked right here in the description. I'm gonna do, I think, two different blasts of explosions separately uh, one in the front and one in the back and my goal is for them to explode and then to look kind of like lava is is kind of flowing around like in Mustafar. So all of my lighting here with this Loom Cube Panel Pro 2.0, I'm also gonna be doing separately. I'm gonna take a couple of shots with the light over here, a couple of shots with it over here, a couple of shots with it over here, all over the place. And then I'm going to layer them in in Photoshop later on. And so I have lighting exactly where I want it. And hopefully it's gonna look like it all kind of matches with the lava kind of thing going on here. So these are my settings uh, for my shutter speed. I've got 2500 because I need a fast shutter speed for the uh, moving particles of the fireworks going ar around. I've got F 1.8 uh, and that's great for, uh, you know, blurry background and great bokeh with the fireworks, great bokeh. Uh, and my ISO is at 400. I try to keep it at 400 all the time. Okay, let's get some shots with the light in different areas. So I'm doing these fireworks at the perfect time of day. The sun is just going down and uh, there's not a lot of harsh sunlight. It's also not too dark too. Harsh sunlight just washes out all the sparks and all you get is a bunch of smoke. If you're too dark, then you don't have enough lighting for your photo and the fireworks look good at, at night, but it's too dark for a photo, you know? So you gotta find that perfect time in the day to take the shot. Okay, I got some uh, fireworks here and let's start blowing some stuff up. Gonna do number one and then number two. Hopefully they, uh, they look okay. All right, front ones are looking good. Nice bokeh. Let's see what we got in the back. Oh, that's great. That looks like lava. That looks like lava. That's great. Oh. I'm only touching my camera now because I feel confident that I'm done. But usually I try not to touch my camera at all to make sure everything lines up. And please, when you are doing fireworks, make sure to pick up all this stuff. You know, melted trash. Because if you don't pick it up, nobody's going to pick it up. And it's going to stay there forever, literally. So make sure to pick that up. Also, for all my outdoor photographers, how do you bring your stuff outside to shoot? Do you put them in a little tray? Bring it outside or you just try to balance it all in your hands or what like something like this is amazing otherwise i think i'm all set and we can get into the editing room now all right so uh i'm over here in the editing room now and so uh if i look at this photo i did there's actually something wrong that i'm not loving and if you look here and uh, zoom in obi-wan is uh very out of focus uh i definitely messed something up here and you know what it happens sometimes so i actually went out and i took another photo later fixing it and obi-wan's in focus over here actually what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna edit this photo like normal and then at the very end i'm just gonna kind of replace obi-wan completely with this photo uh, it's gonna be actually a lot more simple than you think first Let's get started with the actual normal editing with this one. A ton of different photos here as far as explosions go. And first, I'm just going to layer in all of the explosions. And right now, we're going with the foreground explosions. So we've got some of this over here, here, and here. We're going to do this explosion. Let's draw a box over this. Control C, Control Shift V. We're going to change this to lighten so it's important to have the layer type as lighten because it will make all of the dark things translucent and all of the light things not translucent so all the sparks come up great but everything in the background just becomes clear it's great then also a very important thing to do is if you scroll in here see there's a very clear line from where i copied and pasted get rid of that 
I'm just going to erase it. I'm going to use my eraser tool. Make sure my hardness is all the way down. And I'm just going to erase. I'm going to do that a bunch of times with the foreground explosions right now. Okay, all the foreground explosions are there. So I've got all these background explosions that I'm going to layer these into. So just for these whole background explosions, I'm going to grab the entire picture. So control A, control C, and then control V. And there we go. Make sure this is on light and also. But what's really important is since I'm also grabbing things that are part of uh, you know, his face and the figure, I'm going to zoom in and make sure it's lined up. And if you can tell, look, it's not perfectly lined up. I'm just going to make sure my tool is over here on the move tool. I'm going to use my little arrow keys. Make sure it's perfectly aligned. Now it's lined up. I'm going to do that with the background explosions right now. Okay, so all of the explosions are there. We're good. So let's start layering in the lighting. Okay, so I've got three different lighting shots I'm gonna layer in on Anakin. I've got this one here that's red because I'm gonna put a little red lightsaber there. And then I've got one above, and then I've got some on the outside, on his right side there. And that's gonna add some nice rim lighting around the outside of Anakin so it pops better with the photo. The process with this is exactly the same as the explosions, literally exactly the same. Draw a little circle of the lighting I want with the tool here, control C, control shift V making sure the layer type is on lighten and look at that let's go and do that for the rest so uh now that all the explosions and all of the lighting are there we can merge these layers then we can start removing some of the stands and stuff so you go over here and click merge visible make sure everything's good before you merge visible because once you merge visible you only got one layer so Let's scroll and get rid of this stand behind Anakin. Go over here and grab the remove tool. So with the remove tool over here, we're just going to do a little bit of paint. And there we go. It just removes it. It's incredible. The same thing over here. All right, that one's gone. I'm not going to worry about Obi-Wan right now because I'm going to go and do all of him together at the same time later on. All right. So far, so good. I think now is when I'm gonna remove Obi-Wan, put the other Obi-Wan in because I'm gonna start doing some editing over the entire thing now. And I wanna make sure Obi-Wan's included. Draw a box around all of this. Now with this new Photoshop thing with generative fill, we're just gonna click generative fill, generate. And now he's gone. That's amazing. That's flawless. Wow. Let's go and get Obi-Wan now. I'm going to use this tool right here, which is the object selection tool. If I hover over him, it's going to recognize that he's an object. All right. So I'm going to grab him, put him in control C, control V. Because Obi-Wan's being added in later, I can put him wherever I want. So I can add him up a little bit higher. So he's still got the high ground, but just not the high ground he was looking for. All right, now let's just get rid of this stand. And I can just go in and erase it. Look at that. Obi-Wan is just there now. I can't believe how nicely that worked out. Uh, there's one other thing, too, I want to add is Obi-Wan's lightsaber. I did take a photo of his separately, and I want to have it floating next to his hand over here. Okay, so here's the lightsaber right here. It's not super in focus, but it'll do. And grab it. There we go. Control C. Control Shift V. Okay, let's add some lightsaber blades. So to avoid this video just being a little bit too long, if you're interested in creating a lightsaber in Photoshop, just head over to my lightsaber tutorial I have right here on the channel. I'll have it linked in the description of this video also. Now let's just go and actually adjust the brightness colors for the whole entire photo. Filter, camera raw filter. This is just great. You can adjust all kinds of stuff over here. Uh, I'm bring the highlights up, shadows down. I'm gonna bring the whites all the way down. Yeah, so then I get a whole lot less white smoke. Bring the highlights up a little more. Go to the effects. I can turn the texture and clarity up a little bit. Um, all right, let's hit OK. So the last finishing flashy touch is we're going to add some lens flares. We're going to add three of them. So uh, the first one is going to be on the red lightsaber. 
let's go to filter render lens flare let's go to this one 105 millimeter one i just like that one turn it way down 40 and let's put it right at the top where the lightsaber is igniting boom look at that let's do the same thing filter render lens flare let's bring it down for this one amazing looks good so let's go down to this big background layer and we're going to duplicate it just because the lens flare adds some extra stuff sometimes so control j filter render lens flare actually let's do the 50 to 300 millimeter one make it a lot bigger and there's a lot of light coming from the bottom here and i think the lens flare will look good there and there we go so if you ever see these extra little lens flare bokeh things over here and you don't like them that's why i duplicate the layer and i'm just going to erase them this is done let's just add my watermark okay and the photo is done this is it um, not too bad. You know, when I look at it, it doesn't necessarily look like Mustafar. Maybe a little bit, but it still looks pretty good, and I'm happy with it. So, cool. Shooting these alternate history and what if style photos is really fun. And of course, shooting with fireworks is always fun. And I hope it was fun for you guys too. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, it'd be great if you wanted to drop a quick like in the video. That would be fantastic. And also, please let me know what other style toy photos you'd like me to do for further toy photography breakdown videos. Because I definitely plan on doing a whole lot more of these. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.